If you wanna cook, yeah, you can cook, cook, cook. yeah. Now if you wanna make it right, you better cook with pork. Now if you wanna make it right, you better cook with pork. So let's cook with pork. If you wanna cook, you can cook, cook, cook. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If you wanna cook, yeah. You can cook, cook, cook. Yeah. And if you wanna make it right, you better cook with pork. Now if you want. So let's go, go, go. If you wanna make it right, you better cook with pork. Now, if you wanna make it right, you better cook with pork. So let's cook with pork. Hello, 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 hello. Tonight we are making red beans and rice. As you can see, I have my board here, but then I also have a plate here. So that's how we'll be working. Two different I am Brooke Brim of Vegan Soul Food. That's the brand that I founded, Vegan Soul Food. So I'm going to be making you. I'm going to be making you some vegan soul food tonight. And the benefit of vegan soul food is that you get more fiber, you know, you get less fat, you get more superfoods, and it's overall better for your health, but you also get the yummy taste. So that is what we're doing tonight. First thing I want to talk to you about in my carousel, which I have highlighted right now, I have three, I have four guides on Amazon. I have traditional meals. The one that's highlighted right now is my sauces, my gravies, and my dips because, you know, that's what makes food decadent. So you want to have your sauces, gravies, and your dips if you're doing vegan food. The next one is traditional meals. So if you're looking for that traditional soul food but you want it vegan, that's where you're going to find that. The next one is about fasting and juicing. So I'm teaching you how to fast and juice, which I've been doing for about 12 years without being hungry. So raw food and juicy. And there's also recipes in there. And the last one, which is my bestseller, vegan soul foodie dishes that even meat lovers will enjoy. So you may ask yourself, who is Brooke? Why is she cooking? Because I'm a recipe developer. I'm a, a social media chef of vegan food and I love to cook and I know how to make things taste really great, especially your regular soul food favorites. So what I'm going to do right now make myself smaller make my board bigger while I show you what I'm cooking so we're going to go with the holy trinity which for New Orleans cooking that is celery onion pepper and of course we're going to add some garlic as well and we're going to add some jalapeno I'm going to use some pepper some celery I like to add shallots also as a as a uh, aromatic, you really want to add in your aromatics to vegan cooking. 
because that is where you're going to find the flavor. So I'm taking out the seeds and the veins out of this jalapeno because I don't want to burn our heads off. Jalapenos are kind of, uh, what's the word? Did I turn this on? Can't tell if I turn on my mic or not. My mic sounds nice. There it is. I think it's on now. Jalapenos are very unpredictable in the amount of hotness. Right? You just don't know how hot a jalapeno is going to be. So to keep it like with a little bit of kick, but not like blowing your head off, just stick, in my opinion, to take into deveining and deseeding. Now, if you're looking for the kick, you know, you want your head blown off, then obviously don't pay attention to anything that I'm saying. I'm going to go ahead and start putting this in my food processor and I will, um, I will show you my food processor and everything that I do there in a minute. And I'm just going to put everything inside of there. I have a pretty fancy food processor that does amazing things and that is because I do a lot of cooking on the internet and I also do classes. So sometimes I just need to get a lot of things done at once or quickly. So I invested in a good food processor. I'm going to show it to you in just a minute. Right now what I'm doing, this is shallots. And shallots have the flavor of like a little bit of a milder onion. Not necessarily sweeter, just a little milder. It's just something, it's a nice onion flavor, but not, you're not going to get any of the onion bite. Now, for my garlic, I'm using this handy dandy garlic press tool. Let's see if I can highlight it for you in the carousel. Hold on a sec. There we go. I like to use this. You just roll off the, um, got to make sure nothing's wet though. Or else it does not work. Roll off the peels. I usually roll it on the board, but my board was a little wet. Roll off the peels and then you have your garlic, de-skinned. Now, normally, this piece is a little press here. If you press it down like that, you've pressed your garlic and you're going to press garlic. Right now, I don't need pressed garlic because I'm just going to throw it all inside of my food processor. I'm going to put some more garlic because I happen to love garlic. So I'm making red beans and rice tonight. Vegan red beans and rice. So they're still going to have that yummy smoky flavor. But they're not going to be meaty at all. We're going to use other things to create that flavor. If you look in the carousel, you'll see liquid smoke and smoke tarula, like a, which is a yeast. And that's what we're going to use tonight to make our red beans and rice nice and smoky. Now, some people also use smoked paprika for things like that. They use smoked salt. So there's all kinds of things that you can use to smoke. And you know you can actually even smoke your beans or your greens with a little smoker as well. I think I have one in my carousel, a smoker. I use that to smoke ham and things, my vegan ham, when I want that real smoky flavor. Let me get a little bowl. Put all my little garbage in. If you have questions, don't hesitate to holler at me, okay? 
All right, so I have all my garlic inside now. Let's see if I can show you. Hold on. We don't we can do better than this, right? Let's see. Get that one out. now so this is my roboku <coughs> roboku right that you see here it's very simple but it really does the job <clears throat> so you have your go your stop and your pulse you have to make sure that it's snapped in the right way just like all other Make sure all the pieces are right now. <clears throat> As a safety precaution. As a safety precaution, I like to keep it unplugged because sometimes, like these buttons don't, are just not automatically off. Whatever position you left it at, <clears throat> that's the position it's going to go for. That's the reason why I like to do unplug, just in case any hands or thing are around. <clears throat> and I also like to, I'm just going to pause this, because if I did it all the way, it would make it too, too mushy. Pause. Top of this, there you go. So there they are. Blend it up the way that I want. This is pepper, celery, um, jalapeno, and also onion, shallots, and garlic. Okay, nice little pretty rainbow look here. Is going to be the start of my red beans and rice. <clears throat> now I'm going to pull out my this is my This is my Instant Pot um, Duo Crisp. It's 11 quarts, so I'm doing a lot here today. I wanna do, wanna do 11 quarts, let me see. <clears throat> I'm already not liking that I don't have, let's see if I have a thing. Mm, okay. <sighs> Okay, so we're gonna just have to do the best that we can. Let me show you the inside. So this is the air fryer piece because this air fries not only does it um <clears throat> not only does it pressure cook, which we're gonna do electric pressure cook, but it also air fries. So it has this piece here, and then there's also an air fryer there. So we're going to go ahead and turn this on to saute. Pressure cookers, I mean, some of the Instant Pot pressure cookers, you don't have to push the start button. For this one, you do. So I like to put it on saute so that we are, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? So that we are um, <clears throat> heating it up ahead of time before we start pressure cooking. Let me see. I'll be right back. I'm letting it heat up.
I will tell you one thing that I don't love about this pressure cooker is the cord is not long enough. <laughs> now, maybe they knew I wouldn't, they didn't know I would be cooking on the internet and I need to hit at a certain camera, but I do. And so to me, it's just not long enough. So I have to get an extension cord sometimes. <clears throat> I want you to see the inside of the pot. It's getting warm already. I'm going to start. So I have some grapeseed oil. We're going to use the grapeseed oil. You could use olive oil for this as well. Flavor is good for you. So here, just not too much. You don't have to go too much. That was like probably two tablespoons. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find. So this is the instant pot that I'm using right now. Is this it? No, that's not the one. Yes, that is the one. Okay. <clears throat> so it's in my uh, And take out the blade and just start putting the vegetables in. There we go. All the vegetables are in. <clears throat> Mix that around. And I have highlighted the blender that I used, the, the food processor that I used. Again, we're making red beans and rice tonight. <coughs> and I'm sauteing the veggies right now. The next thing I'm going to put in here, now I have chosen vegan chorizo. It has a little spice that I like, and I also like my sausage to be very ground down. You can use any kind of sausage you like. It's up to you. Do you want big sausage, small sausage? Do you like it ground down? This is just the way that I like it. <clears throat> so chorizo is what I chose, but there's so many vegan sausage choices out there and to me I prefer just to grind it down so you just get little bits of meat instead of big chunks but this is all about a personal preference okay not you don't have to do what I'm doing all about inspiration and then you do what you want I'm letting that Okay. Pick it up a little bit. I'm using our instant pot dual crisp. Looks like that one that I have highlighted these. Not quite all right. No, that's it. This one. This is the one. This is the one I'm using right here. It's a fryer. It's also an instant pot. When I discovered uh, pressure cooking on the stove first, I was in heaven because I'm not the kind of cook that thinks of something eight hours and does a slow cooking thing. I'm more of a inspirational type of girl like what would I like to eat tonight then I run and do it so when I discovered pressure cooking on the stove I fell in love and then I discovered electric pressure cooking which is the instant pot it took me a while to convert over to this one but it's even better because um you can walk away you can just set it and forget it and it will start winding itself back and all that kind of stuff I'm gonna put just a tad bit more oil in it just a little bit now, 
I'm going to start seasoning this red bean and rice mixture. Right? This is this right here is garlic Cajun seasoning. I found this in New Orleans, but I also like to use tones. This is the other one I'm using. You gotta watch the salt. Like usually when you use these Cajun seasons, it's probably best not to use any salt. I'm also using the um, <clears throat> smoke yeast, which is at the back of the carousel. Let's see if I can find it for you. I'll just put that in there, smoked yeast. And that usually gives it sort of like a ham flavor. Now I'm also going to use a little liquid smoke. And that's just going to give it really a smoky flavor. Now, because this is red beans and rice and they're pretty smoky, I'm going to use more than I normally do. So that's one tablespoon, two tablespoons. Normally when I use liquid smoke for things like greens, I use very, very little. Like a quarter teaspoon, something very small. But this is a very smoky dish. So you want the smoke in this one. Now, we're ready to add in our beans. I took these red beans, which you can see here, and I did the quick soak, soak method. So these are dried. Okay, I boiled them and then I let, let them sit covered for an hour. So they're ready <clears throat> for me to scoop them in. This. You do not have to use dry. That's just something that I'm doing. <clears throat> Some people even go inside of this instant pot, just clean the beans and go straight from dry without soaking. I'm not there yet. <clears throat> I'm not convinced of that, so I haven't done that. Now, I'm going to add some water to this dish, and I'm also going to add some mushroom seasoning. I'm going to move it around. I'm going to add like a whole pot. of water to this dish. Okay. And I'm going to add in some mushroom seasoning. And if I don't have that in the carousel, I will put that in. So now, the best thing to do is taste your water. Because whatever your water tastes like, that's what your beans are going to taste like. I'm going to add a little bit more smokiness. This is more <clears throat> of the smoked yeast and a little bit more liquid smoke. I want these to be very smoky. So I don't have this to the max. I have it about a half max inside of the thing. So now I have to turn it off and then put it on pressure cook. I'm going to put it on about 25 minutes. Keep on turning it off. And we're going to put it on high and we're going to start. So I'm going to move this to the side now. 
in. Now we're going to start our race. So in the rice, this is another pressure cooker that I'm using, smaller one. <clears throat> Sometimes I use the smaller one for regular dishes that I'm doing, but today I use the big one because we tend to like, uh, we tend to like this dish a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and make some rice. So this is going to be super easy. This is parboiled brown rice that I'm using. I didn't mean to do that. The water first. Excuse me. I meant to do the rice first. So you just kind of fill this up. This is a one and a half cup of rice. But the thing about <clears throat> the rice when you're using this guy is it doesn't matter what the size is necessarily. It really just matters that you cover it. <clears throat> That's what's so cool about cooking your rice in here. So just make sure that you cover it, put a little oil in it or butter, whatever. <clears throat> like a tablespoon of oil. And some salt. And that's all you do, just make sure you cover this rice. Now this is, since this is brown rice, I did a little bit more than cover it <clears throat> because it's sometimes a little tougher. It's definitely tougher than it right? has the white rice. Right. Now I'm going to go and set it on. This has a rice setting. I'm going to put it on the rice setting. Make sure to keep warm is off and let it go. I start putting some things in. Here, all the beeping going on. I'm going to pull out my vegan butter, let it warm because I'm going to make garlic bread. I'll be right back. <coughs> Wash my hands again. 
Okay. What's it say? Hi. It says Soph. Is that my mother? tea pot that I love. I just turned it on. And what I love about it <clears throat> is that you know is that um it makes the perfect tea every time. So if you have the kind on the stove, which I have back there, I just don't use it that much anymore because my tea kettle is just makes, makes the perfect cup of tea every time. You just set it to what you want it to be. Like, hey, what am I making today? Hibiscus? Am I making coffee? What am I making? You push a little button. And you push the little button according to what you're making and boom there you go it makes it the perfect temperature and you can drink it right away so i'm going to go ahead and put oolong turn it on put on oolong and make myself some tea <clears throat> i'm not making oolong but that's the closest that i have to mint tea show you my stack, snack organizer since I happen to be here. This is how I organize my bags. They're kind of busting out now because I have, um, I just filled it up. So this is how I organize my bags. <coughs> I have that in the, caras <coughs> in the carousel. Oh, the snack bag's falling out. Um, So basically, you take your little, <clears throat> all your little bags if you buy bulk ones. Cause like when you go to the um, big box stores, I don't know if that's called the big box stores, but this warehouses, they sell you, like they'll sell you a variety pack of bags and you're like, oh my God, what am I gonna do with all those bags? Well. You get yourself an organizer like this and you can put all your bags away nice and neat. So I have the quart, snack, sandwich, and my gallon. So keep that in my drawer nice and organized. I love it. I'm going to show you something else that I love. I don't think I have it here, but I'm going to show it to you. I don't know what has gotten in my nose all of a sudden. But could be the pollen. Today is like the first real day of spring that I'm seeing. 
And I'm, I'm very happy about that. And we are very big on the pollen in this part of the country, so <clears throat> that could be what's going on. Okay, I'm going to show you my organizer. This is my Doing the most right now. I lost one of my cameras. Hold on. There we go. I should be back in here. <clears throat> Okay, so as I was saying, I wanted to show you my kitchen organizer. So I use this over the door organizer to put all my different things in. So I put all my um, teas and all my spices and peppers, uh, egg replacements are here, mustards, things like that. So that is my door organizer. And I have that highlighted in the carousel right now. It's a, a very good thing if you have a small kitchen like I do, like I have to make the most of it. <clears throat> so that's my door organizer. Back to the tea. I'm gonna make a ginger tea. Cause something has gotten up my nose, probably need it. This is a hot ginger tea. Oh, shit. The most horrible thing has occurred. items over here everything fell off My little um I put too many things on the on the thing and overload. Which is gonna cut down on our cooking time even more.
So while I'm here, I'm going to go through and show you guys. So many things in the carousel. Okay, let's see what I got. Don't be fooled by the rocks. Da -da -da. I'm Sir, I'm Sir Jenny from the block. Okay, so I'm gonna just show you some of the things that I have in the carousel that are in my kitchen while we wait for our red beans and rice to get done. Okay. So the thing I have highlight right now is food saver. And the reason why I have a food saver and I've had one for a while is because I make really yummy food and we don't like to eat that leftovers too much around here. Like after the next day, it's it. And I still haven't adjusted myself to this idea of how to, um, how to make you know, food for the amount of people that live here. So I have a food saver and I freeze a lot of stuff. I'm going to show you my food saver just now because I definitely, this is like a big um, game changer in my kitchen. I don't know what happened there, but it's okay. I made some egg for young, vegan egg for young. This is actually made from just eggs and vegetables. And it's too much for our family. So what I usually do when I have too much for my family is I use my wonderful food saver here. It really saves me money. And it saves me time because I can go ahead and reuse um, items that I made that were really good. I can do a quick meal and I love that. So I'm just going to show you how I use my food saver. So I turned it on just now. And there's a little lever here that, oh, I'm sorry, that that all comes all the way out for your, uh, to put the bag in, but normally we don't go that far. So you unlock it and you pull the bag out. Now, if you notice, there is a little bit of a seal already on there. The reason why there's a seal is because I'm going to lock it and then I'm also going to cut it. This is how I cut my bag right here. Now, once I locked it though, I have the machine on. Once I locked it, this little button, we missed it. I think it was in red that says seal. It sealed a new bag for me. So I'm just gonna show it to you real fast. So I cut my bag and then here I already have a nice new freshly sealed bag. So I love that about this machine. I'm gonna roll it back in. I love that about this machine is that when you when you lock it, pull it out and lock it, it also seals it. So you just come along and you got yourself a whole new bag that's already ready to seal. So what I'm gonna do is I made a bag and I'm gonna fill it up with my vegan just egg mixture for egg foo young. And inside of this mixture is like, um, um, mushrooms and tricolored peppers and a little cabbage. Now, I just got finished doing a tutorial on my Facebook group called Vegan Soul Food um, on Facebook. And I do those every Sunday. And we made egg for young. Well, this is what's left over because I just, it's only three of us eating. So we had all the, all the egg for young we could eat. And now I need to put it away for the next time we're going to have egg for young. Okay. I don't like to waste any. 
So what I do is I clean this off a little bit. And then over on my machine, there is a little toggle between if I'm using a dry food or if I'm using a moist food. A lot of times I'm using a moist food. So I make sure I toggle. You stick it in here, nice and flat, and you can just take your hand and push it down. And it starts pressing the air out and sealing the item. Now what I do is I usually seal it. When it's really wet, I seal it early. And it won't hold in a freezer as long, like you might lose a little time, but you keep it from being uh, messy inside the, uh-oh, uh yeah, see, you, yeah, you see my seal is really good, but see, I have all that liquid there, so I have to rinse out that liquid, because I don't want that there, I want to clean that off. So I'll rinse off the excess liquid and I'll flatten this out in my freezer. And then I'll have that later. And so inside of here, sometimes liquid can collect in there. This is nice and dry, so no worries today. But if you have an extra soupy thing or something that's really liquidy, sometimes you have to go check and make sure that that's nice and clean. But we're good to go. This is also, if you have a bag, a suction bag, you, you can use this thing to suction it. Um, suction the bag. I don't have that. You just pull it and it goes back inside. I use that sometimes when I have there, um, when I buy, I have suction bags that I bought for this machine. But overall, that's how I use it. It saves me. I can take this mixture out in a week or two or whenever, make a new vegan egg for young. And I didn't have to do that much to have dinner again. So I just wanted to show you my food saver. So that is my food saver. I'm gonna show you now this waffle maker that I love. <clears throat> I like a vintage waffle machine, but I also love this one because um, You don't want to, I like this one because, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find something. I like this one because you can literally feed the whole family with this one, just with one pour, which I don't know about you, but if you're the person who's always like standing over the waffle maker, it matters. It matters to me because I'm always the one make standing over the waffle maker. But so this one you can get done in one, this one, one person, one pour. One is really great for setting spear. Um, um, you can set it for what kind of waffle you make, Belgian, plastic, chocolate, buttermilk, be a custom. And it all affects how much time it's going to be. No more guessing when your waffle's done. You can also set it for how light or dark you want it. You can add a little bit more time find that it's not dark enough. Um, the waffles have come out very crispy, and I love that about it. And really, a whole family can be served for one pour. Well, these squares are so big, they're really equivalent to one serving. And that's what I love. So you don't have to be slaving over the waffle iron for too long. It's See these little um, these little gullies along the side? So when your waffle mix spills out, which happens to all of us, you don't have to worry about it spilling onto the counter because it just you can just scrape that off. Um, it's very good. And when your waffle's ready, it lights up and it beeps. So I love this waffle. Okay, so my tea has finally beeped. I had to move it. And so my tea is nice and ready and hot. Ready to go. From my tea maker. <clears throat> Perfect temperature. So I showed you my waffle maker. Let me know <clears throat> so next thing I'm going to show you is my herb rocker knife and I'm doing this because we have time today sometimes I'm cooking and we just don't have the time 
but I think, you know, we have the time today. So here is my herb rocket knife. Actually, I might start using this to go on and start my, um, my garlic because I think it's time to start the garlic butter now. We've given the red beans and rice a little bit of time. I made a little tea. I'm gonna clean off my. I'm gonna clean off my board now, and we're gonna go ahead and start our garlic butter. all kinds of things on here from what we chopped earlier. Go ahead and clean this off. clean. Now we're going to make some, get ready for some garlic bread, which I'm going to put in the air fryer. So when you cook Louisiana style, a lot of times there is bread, French bread and rice. I know, I know, it's, we doing the most, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. <laughs> I'm gonna make myself small. Yeah. <laughs> nice French bread that I got. You can read the labels if you're looking for vegan, make sure to make sure that it's vegan. You just look, look at the labels. A lot of times you go to the supermarket, the ones that bake fresh bread, a lot of that bread is vegan. Just read the label if that's what you're looking for. Look at that piece of bread. It's so pretty. So I'm just going to open it up. And see. Using my cut code knife, which I just highlighted in the carousel. I cut it open. Mm -hmm. 
perfect tea. I can just drink it. No blowing because I use my tea maker and it just made it the perfect temperature. Just a nice warm cup of tea. When I discovered that, it was a game changer. Over. <laughs> Over. So I'm just going to use some of this margarine, which is vegan. This particular margarine is vegan. Not all of it is. Sometimes I use whey inside a margarine. And that's made from animals. But this one has no whey in it. No lactose at all. It's pretty simple to make garlic bread. Anyway, as I was saying, when sometimes when you do the Creole, quote, Creole cooking, they have rice and they have garlic bread. And it seems like a bit much, but you know what? Because it's spicy, um, it's a good thing to like to just help soak up that spice. I think also because it's fatty. Now, ours is not going to be as fatty because we're doing the vegan version, right? So ours is not going to be laced with a lot of pork and meat and all of that. We mostly use smoky flavoring. But just in the tradition of having a little French bread with your meal, with your vegan food, we're going to go ahead and do it. And we're using brown rice, so hey, we balanced it out. Have some more tea. I am doing a cooking class that will move faster than this on Sunday. When I'm on Amazon, I'm just kind of piddling around the kitchen. So it kind of moves slow. And forgive me for that. But when I'm doing a class, it has to move faster. So I'm doing a class on Sunday. You can check it out on my social media, Instagram, Facebook. And you'll see it. If you want to come to me making Easter dinner. Everything is pre-measured, so I move faster. This is sort of like me running around my kitchen just kind of making dinner the way I normally would. Pauses, talks, all of that. <laughs> Electric going out, things like that. <laughs> so I'm going to have a little tea. I'm going to use my garlic press tool. Again, because I want to use fresh garlic. I am not a big proponent of the kind of garlic that comes in a jar. I see people using that, but to me, it feels like all the flavor is going out of it. Nothing like fresh garlic. So I'm gonna use a little bit of that. A few, few, few cloves. We roll it inside of the rubber first. take the peels away. <sighs> now, I'm going to take our press here, press each one. And I just press in. I don't even bother to take it off. I just go. And it goes through the holes and it makes a beautiful press garlic. And kind of pick it up. 
So I'm going to pull my garlic bread back. And I'm going to just sprinkle garlic, fresh garlic, all over the bread. Kind of rub it in. So it'll be kind of roasted garlic. And on to there. Now, just to make sure that I have enough garlic, <clears throat> I'm going to go in with my garlic powder as well. Give that a little a shaky shaky. Just to make sure everything gets a little garlic. I often use garlic powder and fresh garlic together. It's a double, double intensity, double flavor. Now, I'm gonna, oh, one more thing. I want to put a bit of green on it. I need some parsley. Pull it off of that door that I showed you earlier. There we go. I'm gonna have our garlic bread. See, you don't have to buy it. You can make it quick. Now I'm gonna cut some of it because it has to go in my air fryer, right? So let's look at the size of my air fryer. Okay. air fryer thing here and see if we can get it in there. Probably gonna have to do a couple of these. Let's see if I can I might have to cut it like this. Hold on. Cut one there, cut one there. Let's see if I can squeeze one right here on the side. Into the air fryer. Put it on just for about eight minutes. Hello. Yeah. Hmm. Instagram. No, not Instagram. Amazon. Wherever. Not the only place I go live. In. I'm going to show you this knife here. This is my Cutco knife. I use, it's a cheese knife. I don't eat cheese, but I use this for so many different things. And I just wanted to show it to you because it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Now, the deal with it is, um, because it has a little word cost Cutco on it, you can send it back to Cutco to the company at any time, no matter where you purchased it. And they will sharpen it for you. I haven't done that yet, but I think it's almost time. It's almost time for me to sharpen it. been in while oh, it's not ready it's on preheating when it gets done preheating the air fryer will start will make a beat to say that it's ready like a lot of times people put things into the air fryer um 
They put things into the air fryer uh, when it's preheated, but I always just throw mine in. Ready to go. I don't wait. This little liner here is what I use to make the rice. I like to use this, this um, ceramic Gnostic um, liner. Because my beans have about another eight minutes. Here's what the uh, garlic bread is looking like so far. Person watching tonight. Just one person. You can come say hello to me because I don't know why it's just one. So here is our garlic bread, nice and ready to go. I'm gonna take this out, put the next ones in. Ooh, it's hot. Put the next ones in. Is you get to really control the amount of uh, the amount of fat that goes into your body because sometimes when we look at those garlic breads that we see in the store that are pre-made, they use so much margarine or butter or whatever they're using. If you notice, I didn't use nearly that amount. So it's a good thing to make your own. So you can control it. Tastes really good.
I'm actually really hungry. Let me take a little piece of this. Really good. Wow, wait, I'll show you some more videos. Did I freeze up? Set the timer. Um, I love glass jars. My favorite glass jars. Keep them from getting stale. And keep them from the moisture inside. It keeps them nice and fresh. And it just looks good. So, this right here comes in different sizes. And I have my sugar in there, my raw sugar, and my flour, and some teas, and just some snacks. And you can just put all kinds of things in here. You can put rice. I've done that. I put oatmeal in there. It depends on like what season you're in and what you're going to be using a lot of. So if you're going to be using a lot of flour or you're going to be using the kids are going to be having oatmeal packets. I put them in there um, just to keep things fresh. Uh, tea, if you're going to be drinking a lot of tea, it's just a nice way to keep your staples fresh and on hand on the counter or on the rack on an organizing rack and uh it just makes everything look nice and neat instead of having it like in a bag that it comes in and air can get in there and you know it's just not as fresh this keeps it nice it has a, a seal keeps it very fresh okay i burnt one Just a little more crisp than the others. Well done.
ready for dinner. This button has to go down flat before we can open it up. Because until it's flat, it means that um, it's still up to pressure. So the pressure is still going. Sometimes I take a little spoon and I try to help it along. Without more steam like that, I don't think that's recommended. I don't think that's what the what the um, manufacturer or the brand recommends. That's just my home way of kind of rushing things along. <laughs> but right now, what I've done is I've pressed this down, and that is what they ask you to do. So if you close it, it's back to pressure. If you push this down, it releases the steam. And as you can see, there's less steam here, so that means this button is going to start pushing down in a minute and then the lid will be able to be removed. It's not ready yet. And even if you manipulate it and really try to push it down and get it, it's still going to be extremely hot in there. See that? Extremely hot. So I'm going to tell you these are not anywhere near as done as I want them to be. They're going to be in here for a lot longer. But I'm going to go ahead and end this live. I wanted you to see halfway through. If you want to see the finished product, you have to check me out on Instagram, vegan.soulfoodie, or Facebook, um, Vegan Soul Foodie. These are not ready. I'm going to put them back. Back on the, uh, back here to cook. For a minute. Put it in pressure cook, put it on high, take that off. So I actually put them on for another 40 minutes because remember we started from dry beans. We didn't start from canned. If we started from canned, then we'd be done, but we started from dry. So I put them on another 40 minutes. They're going to sit back there and get really like pot pies for 40 minutes. And I'll show it to you on my social media later on tonight. We're going to eat in about an hour, I guess. So that is it for today. Thank you for hanging with me. I'm going to go ahead and end this show. Because those beans ain't ready and they're not going to be ready any time soon. Thank you for hanging with me today.